Hello, my name is Trije, and I can be found over at A Heart for Wisdom. I just wanted to come and give you some encouragement for your week and something to give you a boost of just energy, of life, of faith, of something that will help you along your journey. We all have a journey and we're all on this together. And though we are all dealing with different things at this point in time in history, we're all having to use our faith. And so I just want to encourage you that even in the midst of difficult times, you know, the Bible says that perilous times will come. Our pastor was preaching on that last night. And I was just uh, reading in this book called The Blood and the Glory, and it's by Billy Brim. And so I've been reading about the blood of Jesus and the name of Jesus and the power that is in uh, that name. And so I just want to encourage you as all of the things are happening around us, you know, with the pandemic, the economics, the country, the nation, individuals, people are dealing with all kinds of turmoil. And so I just wanted to come and, and just give you something to stand on. You know, we, it says that we are to stir ourselves up by way of reminder. And so I want to be like Paul and I want to fan that flame and encourage you to fan the flame for your own self, for your own body, for your own life, for those connected with you. Because we are living in the last days and we are called to be a glorious church. We're called to be, uh, when Jesus comes back, he wants a church without spot, blemish, or wrinkle. And though at times it may look impossible, God never speaks something unless he intends to be able to fully carry it out. But we have a part to play in how much we're able to be preserved in the midst of difficult, perilous, stressful times. And so I just wanted to, I felt like I was just supposed to encourage you with some, um, some of the words, some testimonies, some things to get you thinking about how big our God is and to remember that even though everything is shaking, you know, like everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And we are seeing that at a very high rate. And so unless we're rooted and grounded in Christ, unless we're rooted and grounded in the word, it's going to be difficult for us to be preserved through these times. I think about Moses and and uh, Joshua and Caleb especially, how they're going into the promised land. The land is theirs. It's already been spoken. But because of other people, the hearts of people grew faint. They grew weary and they doubted the word of the Lord. And if we're not careful in this season of what's going on in our world, in our nation, in our own personal lives, it would be very easy to doubt the word of the Lord and to uh, question whether or not we were really able to take the land and possess what we're called to possess. And so I just want to be like that Joshua and Caleb, to be like Paul and to say, hey, press on, forget what's behind Forget the circumstances. Don't limit the eternal to what you see in the external. Continue to press on. And so I just felt like I was supposed to encourage you with some of these testimonies to remind you that we can be preserved regardless of whether it's a pandemic, economically, spiritually, emotionally, physically, financially. God, as we seek him first, as we do what he wants done, and accomplish his will, his way, then we can be like Joshua and Caleb. And though everyone else around us perish, we can go in and possess the land. And so I was reading this. It was talking about uh, the story. And it was about Carrie Judd Montgomery. And she is described as a Pentecostal and charismatic movement, a minister, a teacher, a writer, an editor. And she and her businessman, husband, George established the home of peace in 1893. And so they lived in this beautiful home. They were preaching and teaching the word of God and training up others. And in 1906, there was the terrible earthquake in San Francisco. And Mrs. Montgomery said she would never forget the night of April 18, 1906, when she was awakened with a particular sense of imminent danger. She believed that God warned her by faith to put the blood of Jesus over her house and the house of peace nearby. Then she went back to sleep. When I again awakened, the house was uh, 
rocketing, ricketing violently, and it seemed almost as though it were lifting from its foundation. Across the bay, San Francisco lay in ruins. Many buildings in, in Oakland were damaged. The House of Peace, which suffered no serious damage, became a refuge for people who had fled San Francisco. So what I want to encourage you, why am I reading this? I'm reading this because I want you to uh, remember the importance of the blood of Jesus, the importance of listening to the Spirit, and the importance of not going by what you see, but to really put faith in the power of the blood of Jesus to sustain you through any kind of hardship. And then again, they talked about another story. And this one was um, the Los Angeles Times talking on January 18th, the deadly magnitude of 6.6 .6 earthquake. You know, the couple described how they were awakened and it felt worse this time than the earthquake they had experienced in uh, 1971. And so I just want to encourage you to plead the blood of Jesus, to make much of your covenant because that covenant keeps you safe. And then I was reading about Brenda Stein. And so she had been teaching on the blood of Jesus and her and her husband in the church and the importance of yielding to the spirit. And so she had gotten these tapes by Billy Brim and tapes so you can tell like how old it is. And so she was going pouring over these tapes. Well, a week before the last session, she just felt like the Lord had told her to make much of the blood. And so Brenda began to pray and they were in this time and she pled the blood of Jesus over the building and the Holy Spirit gave her clear direction to close the service in communion. And so they did that. And so three months they're preaching on the blood of Jesus. Three months they're preaching about the power and the covenant and what belongs to us as, as Christians and what Jesus did for us. And so she said, I remember, you know, just preaching and, and speaking on these things and how important it is that we have a revelation of the blood. And so as she preached, she said, you know, I don't care if I live in Southern California. I don't care if my house is on the top of a fault line, my house will not be destroyed. And as they did communion, everybody went to their homes and they, you know, pled the blood of Jesus over their congregation, over their households, over their families. And they had the heads of their households do the same. And so they did that. They went home, went to bed. And at 4.31 a.m., she said only a few hours after they had dismissed their Sunday service, she heard the sound of a powerful quake. Then she heard another sound, and it was the sound of her own voice. I don't care if I do live in Southern California. I don't care if my house is on top of a fault line. My house will not be destroyed. And then person after person after person testified of the same thing, hearing her voice, hearing those words. And they all pled the blood of Jesus. And so as it turned out, the Steens' house was near the previously undiscovered fault line, which erupted and caused widespread devastation. Both L.A. and Ventura counties, including the Thousand Oaks, were declared a federal disaster. The houses on either side of the Steins uh, lost China, Mirriers, I mean, they were destroyed. But only the only thing that they experienced was a broken vase and a few, few cosmetic hairline cracks. And so the pastor said that he wanted, you know, to check their, their children and, and they were, you know, checking all around their house. And so they were amazed to see, like, how they were preserved in the middle of this huge, huge earthquake. And thou, uh, members of their church all across the board had the same thing to say. Nothing was broken. There wasn't any fear. Their children weren't scared. They were all protected. And one couple, in order to get their children, they had to, you know, go down the hall, try to make it down the hall to, you know, gather their children. And they all went to the parents' room. Well, the next day, what they didn't realize is that in going to get the children, 
a glass had broken and it was all over the floor. They had walked, everyone in that family had walked over the glass. None of them were hurt or harmed at all. And so it was a miracle, more powerful than any other earthquake that they had experienced before. And so I just want to encourage you with this, is that even in the midst of the shaking, whether it's a physical earthquake, whether it's your economics have been shaken, whether it's your emotional state, the blood of Jesus is more powerful and able to give you stability even in the midst of times when they're not stable. And so, uh, again, time after time, person after person testified that they were taken care of, that they stood on the blood of Jesus, that their children weren't scared, that the Lord was the one that made the difference. And so it's just like story after story. And then um, Kenneth Copeland had did, done a story on this church and on these people. And Melanie Henry wrote this as part of the article. She said, although each story is a victory, in itself is precious. What is most striking about the experiences of those at Thousand Oaks Christian Fellowship is their consistency. There are not isolated, these are not isolated incidents. The testimonies repeated here could be repeated by every member of this church. For me, not one of them lost life, lost home in the earthquake or, or its aftermath. She said, perhaps even more importantly, they didn't lose the peace and security in their families, unlike thousands of other California children who were so shaken they required psychiatric help. Most of the children from the Steens Church ended up more confident in God's protection than ever before. After one strong aftershock, for instance, a four-year-old Justin Riddle ran to his mother's room and said, Mommy, did you feel the earth shake? Yes, I did, Donna Riddle answered. Where Were you afraid? No, shrugged little John, Justin. I just pled the blood. Justin is too young to know how his response to the earthquake is different from that from many other older other children. But it is and it is, and Pastor Arland and Brenda Steen are thrilled about it. Pastor Arlen said, when the time of calamity came to the land of Egypt during Moses' day, the Lord made the difference between the Egyptians and the Israelites. At time, as time moves forward in these last days, there will be earthquakes, famines, wars, rumors of wars, but there will always be a difference between the world and the church. And so that's what I want to encourage you with today, is to remember that there is a difference because of the blood of Jesus, because of the name of Jesus, because of the word of God, there is a light that can come in the midst of darkness. There is an ability and empowerment to be preserved when times are tough and others are not being able to stand. And so physically, mentally, emotionally, I just want to encourage you, for you and your family, for those that are connected to you, that we have answers. We have the power of God. We have the name of Jesus. We have the blood. And if we'll make much of it, if we'll remember and study and really get it down into our hearts, then we're going to be a light in the midst of darkness. We're going to be able to reach out to those who have no hope, those who have no uh, stability. We're going to be able to be that refuge that we're called to be in the midst of perilous times. So I want to encourage you, make much of the blood. Make much of the covenant that you have. Study it. Find out. Read about it. Uh, enforce it. Speak it. You know, don't just let this be something that your Bible is on the table or, you know, on your phone or whatever, and you read it occasionally. But let this be something that you get down ingrained in you, that there is a way to be preserved. There is a way to be able to stand, like Psalms 91 says, when a thousand are falling at your right hand and 10,000, you know, or a thousand, yeah, a thousand at your right hand, 10,000 at your left, or one of the two. <laughs> and, but there's a way that you'll see it, but you won't feel it. You'll see it, but you won't know it. 
These people, they went through things. They went through the earthquake. They went through the aftershocks. They went through the same things that other people did, but because their house was built on the rock and not on the sand, they were able to stand. And so I just want to encourage you, continue to fill yourself up with good things. Don't let the external silence the eternal. Don't let the external cause the eternal to be forgotten. You are full of the power of God. And we have to, just like a well, we have to dip down and we have to pull that up. We have to stir ourselves up. And so I just want to encourage you to stir yourself up, to stay by way of reminder that the blood of Jesus is able to get you through and overcome anything. There's nothing too difficult for our God. So that's what I want to leave you with today. I want to read that uh, last phrase again. And I just want you to remember that you are victorious. And as Pastor, uh, Pastor said, Pastor Arlen said, there will always be a difference between the world and the church. As times move forward in these last days, there'll be earthquakes, famines, wars, and rumors of wars. But again, there will always be a difference between the world and the church. And we are that difference. So get your eyes off of the circumstances. Get your eyes off of the external. Look at the eternal. And then reach higher so that you can be able to be that beacon of hope when others are looking around them, seeing nothing but destruction. So be encouraged that you're a difference maker and that your life is important. Thanks for joining me and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.